Hey guys, so today I wanted to do a video that is similar to another video I made a few months back talking about the best knives for Alaskan survival. But today we're going to be doing a twist and we're going to be talking about the best knives for winter survival. And I felt like making this video because I want to go over some different points that are a lot easier to cover in the winter and that make more sense this time of year. And hopefully this will help you when selecting a kit or a setup or a loadout, uh, a knife for a kit setup or loadout, whether it's a truck survival kit, a personal survival kit, or just tools for everyday living out here in the cold. So without any further ado, let's jump into two knives that I want to talk about and what I think of them for winter survival. So these are actually the same knives that I talked about uh, when I did my best Alaskan survival knife video. And first, we're gonna go over the more expensive of the two, and that's the CRK Pacific. Now, a lot of what I said back in that previous video was is still completely accurate and completely true. Uh, when you're focusing on winter survival or Alaskan survival, you want to focus on picking a knife that is long and robust, something that you can use for industrious tasks such as felling trees, uh, you know, batoning wood, obviously, you know, in doing some of those more industrial tasks because around here you want tools that you can utilize to quickly and reasonably effectively create survival for you. And while it would be better to have an axe and a saw or a hatchet and a saw, uh, you know, other tools, having an industrious knife that can aid those other tools, or if this is the only tool you have, it will be very important for you and it will serve its purpose. It'll serve its purpose many times over. So that's the first point and really both the Cold Steel uh, SRK and this Chris Reeve Knives Pacific fit that bill pretty well. So overall, from that perspective, either knife is pretty good. But there's a few things that you want to factor in addition when it comes to wintertime survival. And one of the biggest that is so often overlooked in warmer climates and in warmer times of year is having a fully overmolded rubberized handle and there's quite a few knives nowadays that do have that such as the Mora Bushcraft Black, the Cold Steel SRK which we'll get to in just a minute, uh, and other knives like the Gerber Strong Arm. But this Pacific here does not have that and in fact the Pacific might be a really good showcase of what you're not looking for because the tang actually sticks up above the handle and that's done for ergonomic reasons for this knife and it's not necessarily it doesn't necessarily feel bad in the hand, but one of the biggest things that's hard to convey over a video is that holding on to materials that are not rubberized or holding on to materials that can get cold, such as micarta and steel, means that you're holding on to a really cold tool and you're trying to do tasks and accomplish things when you're holding on to an icicle. And that, some may say, you know, well, that's why you're wearing mittens, right? You know, that's why you're wearing this layer of barrier to you know protect yourself but you can still feel the cold through the mittens and on even colder days than today you know it just gets more and more amplified so that is one of the biggest things you want to look for is making sure that your tool is comfortable to hold in the cold because you have to get tasks done you know fire starting is not an option this time of year it's not you know something you do for fun it's a part of everyday life if you're going to be outside for any length of time in the winter you're just going to have to so being able to hold a comfortable tool while you're doing those tasks is very important. The other part that you have to factor is ergonomics. Now, understandably, mittens like this are going to complicate anything, whether it's a you know knife that has very good ergos or very poor ergos, it's going to complicate everything. But you definitely wanna make sure that your tool or your knife can be held with mittens. And this is another part where, if I can properly do this, I'm just gonna throw that on the ground. Uh, you can see with this uh, handle that it has a lot of ergonomics to it and when you're holding it with your bare hands or with light duty gloves like I was previously wearing, um, this can work okay, these ergonomics can work okay, but when you get into big mittens like these, which we'll go over with the SRK, it's nice to have a very 
uh, flat, very straight, very homogenous grip that doesn't have a lot of these weird angles because they really throw off your ability to get a good grip with something like mittens. Now, once again, it's not impossible. I'm not saying that it will absolutely not work. I could absolutely grab a piece of wood and whittle on it or feather stick with this Pacific right now. But when we're talking about tools not slipping out of our hands, not you know hurting us or causing us discomfort, these are things that add up. So the last thing you want to factor is really your sheath. And uh, it may seem very minimal. And once again, a lot of sheaths can work. But once again, you have to factor that if you are going to be living in mittens, you know, for 10 hours a day or eight hours a day or even four hours a day, and you're trying to, you know, grab this knife in it or put it in and out of its sheath, having a sheath that is very open and has a very large flap for closure can make it a lot easier to use with mittens. Something that's very fine like this is a little bit more of a challenge because you have to defeat that. Once again, it can be done, and I'm making it look much easier because this sheath isn't physically attached to me. You know, this would be much harder if it was sitting on my hip and I would have to, you know, like fiddle with it in one fixed position. Whereas here, I can kind of twist it and turn it. So, going over to the SRK, this is a little bit more of a knife that you would want to look for for winter survival. And once again, the primary reasons being that, um, with it, you have a very flat and very straight handle. There's not much contouring to it, and that really helps you because your handle or your hand isn't trying to conform to any weird position, and it does make a difference with mittens for sure. In addition to that, once again, as previously mentioned, you know, having a rubberized handle like this makes not only a more comfortable or more neutral temperature to hold, but also having that rubber helps grip the mitten because you're no longer dealing with bare skin anymore because bare skin can grab a lot better on things like micarta or G10 or even wood in different uh, materials like that. Whereas rubber, of course, skin can grab, but more materials like a mitten can get good traction with rubber. So you're not gonna be dealing with a knife that wants to run away on you. And it's going to be a reasonably comfortable handle to hold, of course. Everything is going to feel cold because it is cold out here, but it will be more comfortable for you to hold in the long run. And even I can feel a marked difference between holding this knife and holding that knife. And one of the funniest parts is this knife has been sitting on the ground for quite a few minutes and I've been intentionally freezing this knife uh, for the past few hours and so it still feels more comfortable to hold this even though it's been colder longer than this knife or the CRK Pacific even though it was sitting inside my truck while I was letting this knife cool off. So that really just goes to show you the big difference that rubber makes or rubberized materials can make when you have a fully rubber overmolded handle. And once again, this being fully rubber overmold, there's no tang that's exposed, there's no cold steel, there's no, you know, there's nothing really, um, there's nothing really sticking out at you or making it feel uncomfortable. So that's why I really like the cold steel SRK for a wintertime survival knife, whether it's going into a truck, going into a PSK, or going on body for carrying. This thing is very durable, even in these cold conditions. It's also still very affordable, but it really checks off a lot of the boxes. And I mean, if you were looking for something more expensive that has similar performance or similar attributes, I would def definitely recommend taking a look at something like the Falkneven uh, S1 or the F1 or the A1. I probably would recommend the S1 or A1 because they're a little bit bigger, but you know they have a lot of the same attributes to these. And in fact, with the Falkneven knives, which I didn't bring my Mora, but my Mora has a very similar, or my Mora Garberg has a very similar sheath, but you'll notice with um, some of the Falkneven knives, they have like a big leather flap, leather uh, sheath, and those are actually designed you know, they have that large leather flap so that you can use it with mittens because mittens are far easier to grab something large than something really small. So with this knife, my workaround is that I just don't have anything but the friction fit and the Securex sheath is pretty tight. So 
uh, I'm not too worried about this blade just wiggling out. Uh, it's pretty secure and of course that way I don't have to undo or redo any types of straps or buttons. Uh, this just works. So that is my recommendations for wintertime survival knives. Um, there's, like I said, quite a few things to look at and consider when we are talking about cold conditions. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. As always, God bless and I'm out.